Good evening. Tonight we will be taking a very special look at a very special boy. War for Cybertron, Kingdom Galvatron. As many of you may notice, Galvatron's shoulders are indeed corrected now. And I will put a link to the fix, the video that explains how to fix these, uh, in the description. Uh, it is destructive, I'm not going to lie. It does require you uh, wedging something in here and working out this back pin, flipping everything around without ripping everything else apart. Um, I did this in about half an hour, being careful. I did have a couple of little kind of uh, stress marks. But I also have a heat gun and a torch, and a really quick hit with some heat took away those those uh, light colors off. Uh, this right here was not due to the fix, this gap right here in his bicep. Uh, it came that way in the package. I don't know why, um, but that was not because of the fix. And as you can tell, the fix is fantastic. Um, I could not get past the rivets pointing at me when I had him spun around with the uh, non-destructive fix, as I'll call it. But this definitely looks loads better. Um, this we can do without. I choose to have the, the guns mounted lower. The instructions tell you to do it up here, but that looks goofy. But there's a pin right there, do it there. Again, these are, st these are stupid. This is just more Unicron gimmicks. And here's the bulk of the bot. And he is awesome. He's got wrist articulation. He's got double elbows. He's got nice shoulders that are really tight. Even after I literally ripped this apart, it's still nice and tight. Uh, he's got these side skirts that bug me. They're really loose. They just kind of flap. And they don't attach... Which, I mean, they don't need to because, you know, articulation. That was my hand in the way. He would do a, he will, he will do a complete splits between two Optimuses if you really want him to. He will do that. Um, I've seen some people talk about the, the scuff marks that's kind of part of War for, War for Cybertron, excuse me, uh, I don't mind it on him. I think it is a little bit silly because this is a fresh new bod. Why would there be scuff marks on it? But I don't mind it either. It's not that really nasty brown or the crappy chrome look. It's just a lighter shade of purple. So it looks pretty good. Um, I haven't decided which way I like the cannon better. If I like it down here or if I like it up here. Uh, I think that's how it's supposed to be, and I say that because there is a, a little notch right there, a notch right there, and they line up, which would have it sit flush and not move, but I think I like it down here better so we can actually aim it. He's got awesome articulation, he's got uh, ankles, he's got the ankle pivot, the ankle tilts, they're not like uh, full-blown ankle tilts, you can do it a little bit before it starts to separate things. It's, it's not crazy. But you can do it a little bit. And there's some, I would say, almost mechanical-ish detail when you do it. So that's not bad. You have a waist articulation, but it is definitely hindered by his back. This piece here. But, I mean... I don't know that we've ever gotten a better Galvatron. Ever. This is fantastic. I know these are... Sometimes people do it this way, and I prefer mine to kind of follow this line. Or sometimes I'll, I'll have him sitting like that. I might actually... I think I like that better. Give him more shoulder blades. Or shoulder pads. Um, so after doing this fix, this is all nice and smooth with the mechanical details being underneath like it's supposed to be, which is great. I'm not going to lie, doing it is scary, but once it's done, it's well worth it. And 
My that's the only issue mine came with. It did not have the issue that uh, Cato showed with his with some pins that weren't assembled correctly or some joints that weren't assembled correctly for transformation. Mine was fine except for the the shoulders. That nice Decepticon logo and that face sculpt like that face sculpt. Oh, focus, focus, focus on my nasty fingers. The face sculpt is awesome. The only thing I, I don't kind of like is they added this kind of particle effect, but they did it in this orange that just kind of makes it look like the plastic got too hot. Um, it doesn't look like energy gathering so much as a mess. Let's see if I can, if you can see that. It just kind of. I don't know if you've ever heated up plastic too hot before, like transparent plastic, but it gets this kind of like, almost like haze to it. And that's what that looks like. It doesn't look like it's building energy. It looks like they screwed up when they molded it. So, and for size comparison, because we always love size comparisons, uh, we got to bring in his boys. Now, I do wish that more of them had uh, the light piping that Cyclonus has, but that's for another video. So here's size comparison. I think it works really well. He should be bigger than them, and he is. So let's take a look at him transformed. All right, and here we have Galvatron in cannon mode, which... Um, I use the pieces because they came with it, but this looks stupid. There we go. There we go. That looks much better. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, a few things to note about transforming this guy. Uh, sometimes this piece right here uh, can be a massive pain back and forth. There are these tabs right here when going into robot mode, you may need to actually kind of trim these down a little bit to get him the shoulders to peg in right. It's not a big deal. You just trim it down a little bit. Um, he is Blast Effects compatible, but I'm not going to go full bloosh. I'm just going to go a little bit skeet skeet. Here we are in cannon mode. You know, he's got the wheels. I mean, he's got tank treads, so that makes sense. The back having wheels, uh, I, I guess it has to. Uh, I do like that this is kind of adjustable and because of the way his arms sit, you could, or I should say his front turret sit, uh, you can have him in more of an artillery aiming mode instead of a you know, front facing cannon mode. And you could pull this all the way back to here if you really want to. That'll allow that with the joint there. And just do some alignment. You can have him shooting down shuttles or anything else you really wanted him to. Or aiming up at Starscream on his podium. Podium, throne, whatever, yeah. And you can aim up. Bad comedy, skeet skeet. So, I mean, realistically, nobody's buying this for its alt mode. Galvatron's alt mode has always been about the dumbest thing. Um, even to me, it was even dumber than Megatron. Megatron turning into a handgun that was really powerful that other bots could use was a cool gimmick. Um, or not even a gimmick. It was just kind of a cool incorporation into, yeah, that's the figure was originally designed off of a toy gun, uh, a transforming toy gun. But the way they incorporated it into the show was really cool. Him turning into this weird, just kind of canon thing, um to me feels like the alt mode of your generic grunt soldiers more than the leader. I don't know why. that It's always bothered me. Um, I guess if you really want to, you, you could kind of... Uh, pow, pow. Pow, pow. But that's really stupid. 
Uh, the original one, you could kind of do some stuff like that. I never had the original toy. I had no need. I never liked Galvatron's toy, even as a kid. So here you go. You can kind of see part of that. How that just kind of looks like... It doesn't look like a charging cannon. You know, it doesn't look like particles charging together for some big shot. It just looks like the plastic's messed up, I think. And I... I'm probably alone in this, but I like uh, focus that this is transparent plastic that you can see the way it's assembled. I don't know why this is a bigger throwback to me than almost anything else we've seen. Is this just kind of like cheapo looking hollow clear plastic barrel reminds me of the 80s more than I think most of the other figures do. Like, I'm expecting three light bulbs, like Christmas tree lights, to be inside of here and to hear the as it's going to fire. And every time you pull the trigger, it's a different set of the same, like, four sounds. Like, this is the most nostalgia out of this whole entire figure. Yeah, I like the figure. The figure's awesome. And, you know, it does a good job at what it does. It's unfortunate that uh, from the factory, it seems like every single person on the planet is getting a misassembled figure that none of us is going to do anything about because um, on a failure that large, Hasbro is never going to do a recall or um, offer any kind of replacement for figures that aren't messed up. We'll be lucky to see a second wave of these that come out repaired. At this point, it's just the standard is that his shoulders are screwed up. The fix is destructive, unless you don't mind seeing the rivets. Um... For people who don't mind seeing the rivets or don't want to, you know, do the hassle of ripping the shoulders apart, I may see if I can just print in a matching color or in silver just so that it blends in with the color scheme, uh, a set of little pegs, peg covers that go in there. Um, I don't really do filler pieces very often, but I feel like Hasbro screwed this up enough that I need to fix it. So there's tank mode, or turret mode, cannon mode, whatever. Uh, and there's one more mode that I'd like to show you. I give you flight mode. Um, if you have my um, Megatron upgrade set, the Shattered Glass homage, uh, you can use those parts. If you want to use all of them, you can do this. It looks silly, I know. Uh... Yeah, you fold out the hands, and you can put the little machine guns in his hands. You put the wings like that, with the tail fins like that, because he doesn't have a lot of 5 millimeter ports. It's one of the weird things I noticed about this figure, is it's in the Kingdom line, but it doesn't have ports. Most of the, you know, War for Cybertron, Siege, Kingdom, Earthrise, all of them, were covered in ports. This isn't. It has a couple of them in robot mode, but I had them open his hands to ha have two ports to do that with, and otherwise you just have the two ports on the side of the arms that were just the two ports on the side of his arms. You know, in other figures, I'd be used to seeing ports along his legs, his back, hell, this thing having random ports in it, but it doesn't, and it's... Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. And it's it's really weird. There's the one port in the back, um, but you kind of have to use that for storage of the part of the barrel it's it's weird this feels to me like this was originally designed 100 percent as an studio series 86 figure but they did some switching some figures around because if you look at he's only got a couple of ports But if you look at Scourge, Scourge has more ports than some of the Kingdom figures. So there's the final goofy mode, and it really only applies if you've downloaded and printed those parts or bought them off of me or whatever. Um, so there you go.
So I also want to thank everybody for, uh, we finally hit 100 subscribers. So the channel now has a custom uh, URL. Uh, it's not going to make it easier to find me on YouTube if you search Fire Tox. Uh, it's still going to show Firefox until you tell it not to, not to correct you. Um, but it will be easier to just kind of share the page. So youtube.com slash firetox. Super easy. I want to thank everybody who helped us get there. Helped me get there. Us. Um, there are not more than one of me, I promise. Um, thank you everybody for helping me get there. It really means a lot. It is really important to me for some weird reason to get rid of that long, disgusting URL. So thank you guys. Really thank everybody. Thank you to those who helped me get here. All right. Now, if you like what I do, uh, throw up a like, throw up a subscribe, uh, tell your friends, tell your family. Follow us on Facebook. Us. Why do I keep saying us? Follow me on Facebook, um, Instagram, Patreon, whatever. All right. Good night.